Join me on .NET this time with uh, my friend Brady Guster here to uh, talk about .NET Core and Condoso Crafts and also his hat. Welcome everyone. This is another episode of On.NET and today with me is uh, Mr. Brady Guster. Uh, he's part of the .NET team. He's a senior PM and uh, SignalR, Azure and microservices are his uh, babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And today he's here to talk to us about his hat. No, mm -hmm. about Contoso Crafts, but let's start with the hat. Let's start with the hat. So we had this awesome conference this week in Las Vegas called Dev Intersection. If you haven't been, I would highly encourage it. I think you've been there. I've been. I think you did a keynote or something. Um, which is good. Yeah. Um, but uh, we go to Dev Intersections in Vegas, and at one point, uh, our good buddy Glenn, who always wears a hat, uh, he comes over and he goes, like, you're never going to believe this. Like, he's not wearing his hat. It's like, this is strange. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He said, what happened? He goes, I forgot my hat. He's like, I'm going to have to go get a hat. So he was thinking about getting a hat for like a local team or whatever. So he goes over there and he comes back and he's got a customized hat. Yeah. So I had to get a customized hat too. Um, so we have three. I think we've got one for Glenn, one for me, and one for Scott Hunter, our boss. We had to get one for him. Okay. But now instead of it just being me on the .NET show, .NET's on me. So it's kind of a good thing. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Well, you didn't bring one for your host, so I didn't bring a one little bit hurt. Right. Now, Sorry. let's move on to the fun stuff. The fun stuff. Contoso Crafts That's and good. .NET, That's .NET Core, right? We want to uh, tell us a little bit about what it is. I can do that. So we had this awesome conference here a little while back when we did the .NET uh, Core 3.0 uh, yeah. release, .NET Conf. Is that yes. what it's Conf. .NET yeah. Conf. Uh, it was a great one, great, great little event. Uh, I couldn't be here. I was on a, a customer trip, uh, a great customer trip. But um, uh, one of the things that we did at .NET Conf was we debuted this fantastic series of videos that we have mm -hmm. here, uh, which you can see. And the URL's here, but if you want to know how to get to it, if you just go .NET videos, uh, you'll get right here. And what we did was I worked with some of the community PMs uh, and with you and some other folks. And we basically said, we need a series of video series. It's like mm -hmm. a meta series, I guess, uh, where we kind of go through all the different .NET technologies that we know and love, such as C Sharp, .NET in general, ASP.NET. And then mm -hmm. we kind of go on from there. Uh, Alia did a great one on .NET Core and .NET Framework. Uh, obviously, we went and Shane did one on Docker. Mm -hmm. uh, we have just tons of stuff. Uh, and there's Kendra doing one on VS, which was fantastic. Uh, but we have topics that go pretty deep in all these individual areas. Yep. And obviously, you know, I'm on the ASP.NET team. So the area that I was interested in was helping out with this ASP.NET Core 101. Yes. And what you'll see is when we go to this, it might start playing it. But when we go to this, what you'll see is that it's a long series. Oh, I think we have 13, my least favorite number, uh, 13 videos in the video series where we walk through like pretty much everything you would need to know how to do to okay. you know, be like an ASP.NET Core developer who was getting started, and kind of our goal here was start at the 100 level. Like okay. start at like what is ASP.NET, what is a controller, why should I care, and then go through the latest and greatest stuff like okay. Blazor. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we kind of walked through all those individual topics and you know came up with a bunch of things that we wanted to talk about. And then when we you know got together during our Wednesday meeting with the community and the engineering PMs, we said, well, what are we, you know, what are we gonna do? We need yes. some sort of a sample app. Well, as Folks out there know, like that's kind of my game. I like building demos. Sure. Like, I used to do this for a living and stuff. So uh, the community team came to me and they said, we want you to build something that's not your traditional line of business app, something kind yep. of trendy. So what we did was we came up with this idea of Contoso Crafts. You know, we have to use one of our fictitious business yes, names for everything. Um, but we came up with the idea of a craft store. We were thinking of other craft stores online where mm -hmm. people can either build geeky crafts or non-geeky crafts. Mm -hmm. and we thought, let's do something kind of cool like that. You know, nice. something charming, if you will. Um, so we just sort of came up with the idea, and what we've done, uh, if you walk through that video series, is to literally introduce all the major components, if you will, of ASP.NET Core in a non-threatening manner. Right. You know, so we can kind of walk through. Um, and what I'll do is I'll kind of walk through the different pieces of the app, sure. just to kind of show you what it looks like. Now, we, did, we deliberately did not get into things like databases and RDBMS mm -hmm. and entity framework. We didn't do any of that stuff. Keep it simple, uh, right? We really wanted to keep it simple. Uh, I think the most complicated thing we talk about is something like dependency injection. Okay. You know, so you learn how to inject a service into, let's say, a controller. In this case, we have the products controller, which is nothing more than a web API controller. Okay. Um, and it gets data from a, a place. You mm -hmm. know, uh, that place in our particular applications case is a data file. 
And if you look in that data file, you'll see that folks like Jim Looper um, and a lot of folks in the community actually contributed their artwork to nice. this project. You know, we, we reached out and we said we want to do something nifty. Mm -hmm. or we want to do something crafty. We know that we have a lot of folks out there who have built crafts either with their favorite technology or not with technology. Okay. So what we wanted to do was to kind of get some existing photos because like us going out and building a bunch of contrived crafts just really wouldn't work. So if you take a look in the products JSON, you'll see references to uh, a bunch of Kickstarter sites. You'll see links to Jim Looper. You'll see links to Sailor HD's uh, stuff uh, and a bunch of other fo folks as well have contributed things as well. So you'll see a bunch of things out there. I want to thank all of you wonderful people from the bottom of my heart for letting us not only link to your product pages, but to use your product images. We took a bunch of liberties. Thank you again. I thanked you all on Twitter. I want to thank you again for all the work. Um, and if you want to you know, look, you could just look in that products JSON file and you could see it. But Getting back into the code, really what we did was we had this JSON uh, file product service, and really what it does is it just opens up that JSON file using our brand new system.txt.json mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, that was something we wanted to highlight, so we you know wanted to educate folks on how to do that. This just opens it up. You kind of see you know what link looks like. You know we do a link query in the code to get back the first product, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, and then you would look in uh, if I can find it startup CS here. If you were to look in Startup CS, you'll see that we add we add that service to our DI stack, and then we inject it in our you know products controller over here. And then when we got into the view stuff, uh, we started obviously with a razor page view. Yes. Um, but uh, you know, see here that if I open up this razor page view, there's really not a lot of stuff in it because what we ended up doing was changing it into a Blazor view. Ah, so we actually nice. took our razor file and we changed it around and we turned it into a Blazor view. And that Blazor view, if I open this up here, you'll see in the components we've got uh, the product list dot razor. Yep. And essentially, that's just a list of all the products that we got from that data source. So and for, it was, and for people that don't, don't know what Blazor is, Blazor is our uh, fantastic new view technology. Uh, we have two flavors of it. Yep. Uh, one of them is out, and you can party on it. One of them is still experimental. Is the idea of uh, things happen on the server, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to do a bunch of JavaScript on the client whenever the server things change. Okay. Uh, the idea is we we know that a lot of developers love C sharp, mm -hmm. um, and you know if I wanted to talk to you about doing JavaScript, you might tell me to use jQuery. I might tell you that's not as cool as Vue, and then it's just it you know it yeah. dwindles at that yeah. point. We just start fighting. So really, we wanted you know folks to know how to use .NET, and we wanted to show you how to use Blazor in this short little tutorial. One thing that was interesting about that was we started, uh, you know, we, we as PMs, especially as community PMs, we always want to understand the pain points that customers go through. Yep. And as engineering PMs, we want to understand that, so we mitigate that, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, so when we got started with this, we thought, well, let's do, you know, a web API controller or a view controller. Then let's talk about how to do this with uh, Razor pages. And then last minute, it was, hey, Blazor is going to get released. Let's mm -hmm. change this to be Blazor. So we had to go through the act of converting an existing Razor view over to a Blazor component. Yep. That was it. That was an interesting a experience. Learning moment, that was right. a very big learning moment for us, and it was interesting when, like, those of us on the product group who were kind of seeing this all the way through, okay. we have to talk to each other. Like, I hadn't thought about that problem. Mm. I haven't thought about that problem. So. And what you can see here is that I've hit F5 and run it. And you'll see here that now we have all these different, again, thank you all for your contributions. Uh, you'll see that we have a different, uh, couple different products popping up on, on screen. And what you'll see here is that we have these more infos. And when you mm -hmm. click on the more info button here, you'll see that it actually pops up in a pop-up. This is all done using Blazor. So Very this nice. is a good example of when you can do something dynamic on the client side yep. using Blazor to like do JS interop mm -hmm. and whatnot. So we actually show how to do that here. And if I were to click on one of these, uh, we have a scrolling bug. I don't know what that is. Um, but you can see that I can click here and just we can kind of- Just two likes. Just, just two likes. It's only got two likes. So it's because I just cloned it. So this is sort of an idea where you could actually see how to build one of these components <coughs> that's actually interacting with .NET code on the server side from a pretty dynamic, you know, JavaScript front end. So, yeah. um, but it was fun to build. You know, it wasn't your traditional line of business app. It wasn't, you know, it, it was different. So yeah. it was kind of fun. It's not another to do. It's not list. another to do yeah. list. Yeah, exactly. We have so many of these out there. Yes. Yes. Nice and to and as the, as the Signal RPM, I also get really tired of doing <laughs> chat apps. I have to say that every time I'm in here. So, or um, tickers, right. or tickers, tickers. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, th th yeah. I've done a lot of tickers. I've done a lot of that. Um, so what I've done here is I've actually popped this open again. I want you to all take note of the URL. 
if I go up to the top, we have a repo out in, or an organization, uh, mind you, out in GitHub called .NET Dash Presentations, which is where a lot nice. of us who do presentations and demos on the road, we tend to put these things out there, mm -hmm. uh, so you can party on it. Um, we actually have quite a few. Um, if and these you, are available to everyone, right? So anyone that is doing .NET uh, Core presentations or .NET presentation can go to their repo, grab something that they like, and yes. then they can demo it. Exactly. And and Exactly, and if you take a look at these videos, uh, and this is something I would you know, encourage you to think about, if you take a look at the videos and you think like they've represented all the different technology that I know and love in mm -hmm. ASP.NET Core minus one, I think I should do a pull request. Yes. We would love to have a pull request from you. And one yep. thing that we've talked about doing, uh, your co-host Cecil, we've actually discussed uh, taking this and like cloudifying it or making it into like a set of microservices so sure. that you could uh, run it on K8s. <laughs> if you will, so that if you wanted to do this inside of a Kubernetes cluster, we're eventually going to add Helm charts and whatnot, so you could actually figure out how to do that. Very nice. So yeah. Um, speaking of okay. microservices, uh, I do want to do a quick uh, selling point for our teams. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you were at Ignite or you were involved, you are watching Ignite on, on screen, uh, Handsome and, and Friends did a fantastic developer keynote in which they kind of showed off this awesome example called Rock, uh, Rock I have to get it the order right. Rock, paper, scissors, lizard, spot, where we actually did a game online. Yep. Uh, and we used gRPC for it, because in .NET Core 3, we have all this great support for gRPC. Yeah. Um, and what we did was we actually had a set of microservices that would communicate over gRPC. So it was .NET Core to Java to Node to PHP and all of it. So yep. we were showing great interoperability in microservice land with mm -hmm. .NET Core and gRPC. So I would encourage you to take a look at this. Now the difference in these samples is pretty ginormous. Contoso Crafts is your 100 level thing. Yep. Uh, RPS LS was built by maybe like nine people, you know, <laughs> over like a three month period. So I do want to point out that the scope of these samples is pretty different, pretty variant. Yep. So, um, but if you want to take a look at some of the other samples that we've done, you know, you can take a look here. Um, but uh, for the purpose of this show, mm -hmm. we do want to draw your attention to the Contoso Crafts repository, which is kind of your 100, your 101 level yep. ASP.NET Core getting started thing. And we want to direct your attention to these awesome .NET videos that were worked on by a bunch of great folks here on the PM and Dev team and the community PM team. Uh, then they cover everything from ASP.NET all the way through to you know other stuff. So if you are just getting started with development or you want to do development, you want to change your job, this is, might be a good way for you to get started. You don't have to go to school. You can just start with five and 10 minute videos. And I think pretty much all these videos have a, cor a corresponding demo set that you could download like in Toso Crafts. So you yep. can you know get started with it. So that's kind of. That's kind of what I was here to talk about today. Excellent. Yeah, not my, my, not my typical show, but this was fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to work on this. So. Yes, yeah. and like your one-on-one -on -one videos they have there, this mm -hmm. is short and sweet and uh, mm -hmm. shows us what we can do with .NET uh, Core today mm -hmm. and where the future lies with Blazor and other cool technologies, right? Exactly, exactly. exactly thanks, right. For, th th thanks for coming. No worries. Yeah. Thanks a lot for having me on here. Thanks. Have a nice day. Thank you.